Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, welcome back to Impact Weekly. Another day and another episode where we will answer some of your most pressing customer success questions. And I think we have a theme here. The last couple of episodes, we're getting a lot of questions around goals and goal discovery. And we'll uh, go down that path today as well, which we love, by the way, because this is such a huge topic and there's so much to do in this area. But to bring it back to today's question, this is the question. I know goal discovery is important, but how often should I update the goals with the customer? I think this continues a little bit from last week. We talked about how important the goals are, of course, but we also talked about that question last episode was how to make time for it. That was more from the perspective of a customer success manager wanting to do goal discovery. This time we're going to talk about how, uh, how often should the goal be updated? How often should we have that discussion? And to start off with, there, there's of course no, there's no uh, one size fit all here um, with the cadence of this. Uh, but of course, we want to give you some guidelines here and something to work from when thinking about this. Of course, the easiest thing to look at is the time frame for a goal. So let's actually take a step back again. If you haven't listened to last week's mm. episode on goal discovery and on its importance and everything, you should definitely do that. So I'm not going to recap too much, but remember a goal is two things. It's an objective and a time frame. Okay. So the objective is yeah. the thing that we actually usually mistake for being the goal when we use those two terms interchangeably. I'm not being pedantic here. It's really about understanding what is going on here. So and a goal is both an objective and a time frame. The objective is the thing we need to accomplish. And the time frame is the time frame within which we need to accomplish that. If you just have the objective yeah. and you don't have a time frame, then you really just have a wish or a hope because the time frame is what allows us to have that time scarcity, sense of urgency to know when yeah. we need to actually do this thing. If we don't have that, it's just very unlikely the objective itself is going to be met. So objective plus time frame. So that means one of the things we can pay attention to is that time frame, right? If somebody says, yep. I have a, a goal, this is the objective I want to accomplish, and I want to do that in six weeks, then we know that we'll probably want to see what their next goals are going to be somewhere around six week mark, I would say probably about four weeks. We want to start having discussions about what their next goals are going to be. We want to make sure we're keeping things updated, that we're paying attention to that, that time frame there as a general rule. And again, when we look at it that way, you can see why there is no one size fits all, uh, you know, cadence to check in on these things, because <laughs> it's really going to depend on, on the specific yeah. goal of your customer in your unique situation. Yeah. And that's also why it's that part is critical to, to see, to, to have the timeline and define that or get, get the rough timeline at least with the, from the customer, because For we sure. know too many times we don't have that discussion at all. We just say, we bought your tool here to help us grow or save cost or whatever. And then we don't go any deeper or right. we get some vague explanation from sales in the handover and then. We just keep at it and we don't, bring, we don't go into these details. And we talked a lot about that in the last episode, but I think, I think this, this is the next step following to that. If we have a CRM product and sales organizations buy it, we can just assume that they're using our product because they want to increase sales or even without our product, like yeah. we know that they want to increase sales. That's not something specific. We need to know mm. what, what that really looks like and more as specific as possible in terms of the 
actual objective? Like how much do you want to increase sales? Yeah. I have a story re re referring to your example there of a CRM, if you're a CRM vendor. Oh, perfect. Uh, where, where you actually can, can go wrong there if you just assume that the goal is to increase sales. Or maybe that's, you assume that and that's maybe correct, but how they actually want to get there if you don't go below that, you, you, you might even lose or churn a customer. I have a, had a customer that switched from a, an outbound sales model into an inbound sales model. In both cases, you need a CRM, but the use case is very different. And in both cases, the goal, the overreaching goal was to grow. But you did not, we, if you didn't ask how, they might have switched to another vendor that was better for the inbound sales rather than the outbound. Wow. So I think this is where we want to go with, this is why the goals are so important. Yes. If we just left it at, oh, we want to grow sales. Okay. So mm. as the vendor, we're going to take them down this one path that's mm. designed for outbound sales. And we didn't mm. take into consideration that there may be more to it when they say they want to grow sales. That if we just dug a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper, yeah. you know, we would find out, oh, they want to grow sales through an inbound approach, which would yeah. mean we would go, we would take a different tact with them. We would send them down a different path. But because we didn't dig into that, yeah. now we had that churn. So I appreciate you, you bringing that up. I always use CRM as an example, and I forget that you have a lot of experience in that world prior to start delivery. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So I think, look, we have the time frame of the goal that our customer yeah. has laid out for us. but we also have what we call, right. I call them, it's team prompts and T-E-A-M yes. is an acronym. And what we want to do is have this monitoring and intervention process that we have in place mm. to help us pay attention to things that might affect our customer's goals. Yeah. So if a customer says, I have this objective that I'm trying to meet in this time frame, and we lay out a plan to do that, mm. as, as long as they stay on pace moving through progress yeah. milestones at the appropriate cadence, they're going to achieve their goal. That's great. There may be things that come up that would interfere with. Them. And to the extent possible, right. we want to be paying attention to those things so that we can intervene to, it, to just at least mm -hmm. check to see, hey, has this thing affected your ability to reach your goal? So the team prompt yeah. is triggers, events, actions, and milestones. So T-E-A-M right. is an acronym. And let's break it down real quick. Triggers mm. are really anything that happens with the customer company or the customer's yeah. market. So when we talk about the customer company, this could be literally things that are happening at, at the entity level. They get funding, they file bankruptcy, they make an acquisition, they get acquired. It could be things happening structurally, organizationally, their leadership changes, some managers yeah. change. And that's things huge, that, of course. Yeah. Just personnel changes can be a massive churn threat, usually, let alone yeah. just affecting their ability to reach their goals. But all of these things can have a significant impact. And then one other aspect that kind of gets overlooked is things that are happening in the customer's market or their, the, the world in which they operate that may not have anything yeah. to do with their company, but mm. could impact them. You see this with government regulation, yep. new rules come down and all of a sudden they mm. either have to scramble to try to reach these new rules or it simply affects the way that they are going to be operating, which may impact their ability to reach the goals that we've laid out. So you need to be paying attention to those things. Yeah. And again, this just raises a flag and says, hey, mm. go talk to the customer because this may be something that's going to impact their ability mm. to reach their goals. Events are really simple. They're just calendar events. They're usually known well in advance. At a general level, these could be the holiday season at the end of the year. This could be tax season, but it could also be events that occur yeah specifically within your customer's world. Like they're not general events, right? but they are known and they're on the calendar and maybe that overlays with, with the goal that they're trying to achieve and the timeframe they're trying to achieve it. And 
we know that mm-hmm. as they get closer to these events, they might get distracted or people might go on vacation or whatever. And so we need to intervene to see how is this event going to impact their ability to reach their goal. The next one is A or actions. And actions, again, fairly simple, but there's a lot of possibilities here. And and this is going to be very unique to your situation. Actions are really just any action that the customer is taking in what they do with you and your company. So this could be actions they take in the product. It could be actions that they take with other parts of your company, maybe opening support tickets or working with professional services. So if all of a sudden you're going along and your customer opens 17 support tickets and those tickets are not yeah. being closed in a timely manner, this is probably an indication that's that they've hit a snag, like something's something's gone wrong, which probably yeah. means they're slowing down or they're not being able to make progress. And that's going to impact their ability to reach their goal. So that would be a reason to intervene. Finally, milestones. So we talk about progress milestones all the time. Mm. And that's what this is. Is our customer moving through the progress milestones that we've laid out to get them from point A to point B? Yeah. Are they moving through those progress milestones on the appropriate cadence that we've also laid out? And if they're not, Mm. it means that there's a, a chance that they're not going to be able to reach their goal. Again, the objective in that time frame. So that's a reason to intervene and just see what's going on. And any of these reasons for intervening, any of these prompts that are going to get you to intervene, may, you may find that everything's just fine. There, yes, mm-hmm. there's this trigger or this event, but it's not going to actually impact uh, their ability to reach their goal. Great. That's awesome. So that's the team prompt. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's a, a really helpful yeah. way of, of understanding what's going on with your customer for goals and just really for anything right. else too. Yeah. yeah. So basically, if we set goals in the proper way, we have a time frame. So that's one part to to help us know when we need to update or reevaluate the goal. As you mentioned now, this team prompt, that's you need to, we need to pay attention to the, all those things because they will affect the goal as well. What else do we have around this? I think we talked about this earlier that sometimes... For someone that hasn't been doing goal discovery or is getting started with this, one of the pushbacks we get is that it's, it seems very heavy. How am I supposed to do all these things with my customer? And I think we, maybe we should touch on that a little bit. When we bring this up, we, we either get the direct feedback of, no, <laughs> I can't do this. I don't have time. And again, in, in our, yeah. our previous episode, we went over how to find time to do this. But sometimes it's not such direct feedback. Sometimes it's just, I say, a vibe. You just get this feeling from somebody that like, oh, am I supposed to do this? So one of the things I like to remind people (laughs) is when you're doing goal discovery, you you don't have to do it all at once. So if you're following our goal discovery framework that we teach in Impact Academy, it's a multi-part framework where we try to figure out what Mm. the customer's goal is, the reason Mm. behind the goal what we call the big why, as well as who all is involved, where they're starting from and and all of that. You don't have to just sit down and have a conversation where you run through this entire checklist. In fact, some of this is going to come up naturally, although you may need to be deliberate about Mm. this. It might not come up naturally without thinking about it, but it's something that as you're working with a customer, you're going to find out where they're starting from, which is critical to knowing what the path is going to be towards their goal, towards the destination. We have to know where we're starting from. You're also going to Mm. probably just as part of what you already do, but again, you may need to be more deliberate about this, is understanding who all is Mm. involved, understanding all the different stakeholders. That's something we need to know. And that's going to come out in just regular discussion. The actual objective and the timeframe may be something that you have to ask them about specifically because it's not something that they might just volunteer. So that's going to be a specific conversation, Mm -hmm. but you can do that on one routine meeting. And then on -hmm. your next routine meeting, you can say, Hey, this was the objective in the timeframe that you brought up. I'm just curious. What would happen if you don't achieve that goal? Right. Or, or conversely, you could say, Mm -hmm. yeah, 
Can you tell me more about why that's your goal? I'm just trying to understand from a business standpoint or, or whatever, what's, yeah. why is this important to you? So now you're digging into the why. And this is happening over several just routine meetings. You're going to get all the information you need. It's going to feel much more natural. And it's not something where you have to dedicate 15 minutes of a 45-minute call to just doing this goal discovery process. Although I think it's important enough that if that's what you did, that's fine. But reality is what it is. You probably don't have that luxury. Yeah. And the fact is you don't have to do it like that. And what's really key here is, of course, to have the framework or the information you want to gather. If you have that in front of you, if you have that template, then it's much easier to be present, to really take in what the customer is saying. And also gradually you fill out this information you, you want from the customer to really capture the whole goal and the time frame for it. So I think it's very important to have that, know what you, where you want to go, but then you can take it in steps. And as you say, Lincoln, uh, it's not, we don't want to push this. We want this to be really a natural part of the discussion all the time with the customer. One of the ways that you can make it more natural yeah. is by reminding them what's in it for them. Okay. So if you just are asking them questions and it's not entirely clear why you're asking these questions, that might make the customer feel uncomfortable or just not really understand why we're talking about this. So I think it's always critical to remind them, especially at first as you're going through this, what's in it for them if they answer you? What's in it for them if they provide you with a detailed goal, with a detailed objective and a clear time frame? What's in it for them mm. if they give you that underlying why? And yeah. what's in it for them it can be very simple. It can be, look, the better I understand what you're trying to accomplish, the mm. better I can provide you with a success plan. The more I can help you use our product efficiently, right? So- it's, it doesn't have yeah. to be anything more complex than that, but you're telling the customer, this is the reason that having this information is going to be helpful to you. So it's not just, yeah. I want you to tell me this stuff. Very it's, important. Yeah, exactly. It's, here's the reason. And yeah. Robert Cialdini, of the, you know, for, he wrote the book Influence, and he's been a, a massive influence on the work that I do, said that he has this whole section on because... Yeah. They ran experiments where people would, who were trying to cut in line would, would mm -hmm. be allowed to cut in line if they simply added a because clause to their request. Can I cut ahead because I'm late for my class? Or can I cut ahead because mm -hmm. I'm late for my flight? And mm -hmm. they found that that worked a, a statistically significant amount of the time. It, it improved the results. Yeah. But they actually found that if you simply said because and didn't even add any other detail, people would still allow you to cut. And that's what we're doing here. If I'm asking you to give me some information and then I give you a because, I give you a reason why I want this information, you're just more likely to give me that information. So there's, there is some psychology here. Another reason that they, the customer sometimes is uncomfortable talking about this is that they actually feel that they should know this, but they don't. So that's also why it can sometimes be, you need to look at this as a pro process also where the customer perhaps needs to do some discovery on their side to talk to their leadership team to, yeah, why are we trying to grow and what, how can I, how can my team or my part of the this organization help reach that goal. So sometimes we need to also ask the customer maybe to find out more because they don't know actually what the goal is here. To, to your point, like exactly, they, they may be reluctant to tell you not because they're, they don't want to, because they just don't know. And now they feel bad. They feel like they should know. Mm. So if you can say, yeah. look, a lot of my customers, when I bring this up, they're not used to talking about this with their software vendor or I put you on the spot. I realize that in preparation for our next call next mm. Tuesday, you know, if you could talk to somebody and again, if you can provide them even guidance on typically it's the head of marketing that has this information, 
if you could talk to them and find that out mm. and then bring it to our next meeting, we'll be able to put together a more detailed plan for you. So now you've told mm. them that they're not alone. This is not uncommon. You've given them some guidance on who to talk to because they might not even know. And you told them, mm. no sweat. We'll just bring it to our next meeting in a week. Now you've given them some time mm. to do that. So yeah. we can also yeah. do something that I think is really critical, which is remind them. So once we've gone through this process, remind them to tell you when their goals change. Because yeah. sometimes goals change before without ever without the previous goals actually ever being met. Like that that just happens. So by the way, you, you should also not become super attached to your customers achieving their goals. Like it's not a failure on your part. Sometimes things just change on their end. And so now they're on to yeah. a new goal. Yeah. And you don't find that out until you have a quarterly business review or something and they tell you that they're onto this new goal. And so you might be two or three months removed from when they actually pivoted to this new goal. Yeah. There's a lot of downside to that, but one of the one of the actual customer centric downsides to that is if they pivoted to a new goal and didn't tell you, they may be using yeah. the product in a super inefficient way. So this, so now we go back yeah. to them and we say, listen, if your goal changes, whether it's a change to the objective, it's a change to the time frame, or if you have a whole new goal or you stack another goal on top, let me know as soon as you can so that I can make sure you're using our product as efficiently as possible. So now I've given them that because mm. I've given them the what's in it for them. If they tell me, they might not mm. think oh, I need to tell my CSM that we've you know, pivoted to a new goal. But if we remind them of why that's important, then they, they'll be much more likely to be proactive on that and say, hey, by the way, we this is our new goal. Can you help us make sure that we're doing everything right? Which is fantastic. That's what we yeah. want. Yeah. Exactly. And that would have been great in my example there as a CRM provider where a customer is switching from an outbound model to an inbound model. Absolutely. No, they that's a great, us. exactly. Yeah, that would have changed everything. And, uh, and I, I think sometimes this is something we forget uh, to ask the customer to update us. And uh, I think in general, customers are very happy to do that, but they need to be reminded of it. And of course, why that's important as well. Yeah. And this actually fits into what we call joint accountability, which is something we teach in Impact Academy. And that's basically yeah. the notion that we're in this together. I'm here so, to help you achieve your goals. There's stuff that you're going to have to do on your own, but there's things you're going to have to tell me, right? If, if I don't know what's going on with you, I can't help you achieve your goals. So for us to truly be in this yeah. together, we have to have that joint accountability. And part of holding up your end of the bargain customer is to keep me updated on changes to your goals, because I can't help you if yeah. I don't know those. So just laying it out like that and it's amazing what happens when we, again, frame it in a way that makes it seem like there's real value to them to let us know when these changes occur. Great. So I think let's summarize now the question again. I know goal discovery is important, but how often should I update the goals with the customer? So let, let's give this person three practical uh, ways of answering this question. So. I think, first of all, it's the thing we touched on last, which is remind your customers to keep you updated when things change, especially around goals. Number two is look to the team prompts, the triggers, events, actions, and milestones so that you can see when things come up that might affect the customer's ability to achieve their goals. And the last part is what we talked about all the way through today is that you want discussion around goals to be a natural part of the interactions and discussions you have with the customer. And you need to have a good framework with it. We have that at the Impact Academy, but make it natural. Uh, and sometimes we have to do it in steps uh, with the customer, but it's crucial and that's going to make a huge difference for you. So those are the three recommendations for this person asking the question. And keep asking questions. We get a lot of them and we love to, to get more. So. Keep asking questions and thanks for today. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? 
check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success. Thank you.